section three six, picking up with example five. <coughs> Yesterday we looked at the basics of the chain rule and we did some um, problems. Today we want to look at some more elaborate examples. Okay, so uh, for example number five, we have the um, derivative of a quantity raised to the ninth power. So like we saw yesterday, we can't take the derivative of a quantity without chain rule. It would not matter what I had in these parentheses here. If you took the derivative of something raised to the ninth power, the derivative of that would be nine times that something to the eighth power. It does not matter what's in the parentheses, just bring it along for the ride. So if that was smiley face to the ninth power and I took the derivative of it, it would be nine smiley face to the eighth power, right? That is the derivative of the outside function. Just bring your inside function along for the ride. It's the derivative of the outside function in terms of that inside function. Then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And what makes these problems today a little more challenging is the derivative of the inside function. Because when I go to do the derivative of this inside function, that's like a whole problem in itself, isn't it? I mean, that's like something they would have asked me a week ago to do as a problem on its own. So I have been doing this for way too many years, and I still come over here to the side and just work that as an entirely separate problem. So literally, forget about this thing over here. Come over here to the side and say, if this were my original problem, what would the derivative of that be? And just work it entirely separate, okay? So if we were taking the derivative of this, we'd have to use our quotient rule, right? So we would do denominator times derivative of the numerator. What's derivative of the numerator? One mm -hmm. minus numerator times derivative of the denominator. What's the derivative of the denominator? Two mm -hmm. over the denominator squared. And then let's simplify. So 2t plus 1 times 1 would just give us 2t plus 1. But down here, I have a negative and a 2 being multiplied by the t minus 2. So let's just think of that as negative 2 being distributed, OK? So negative 2 times t would be negative 2t. And negative 2 times negative 2 would be positive 4. So the 2t and the negative 2t would drop each other out. 4 and 1 would be 5. No need to foil that denominator. We'll leave it as it is. That would be the derivative of my inside function. So let's bring that over here. And you can see how much simpler that is than if I was trying to write all of this craziness over here and continually to carry this along step by step. It just turns into a great big mess. So you're welcome to just go off to the side and work that separately and just insert your answer. So now we have derivative of the outside times derivative of the inside. And I need to do some simplifying, okay? So we could go through and take the nine times the five to be our 45. That would leave me with t minus two to the eighth in the numerator. And I'm gonna separate my numerator and denominator because right here I have 2t plus 1 and right here I have 2t plus 1, so there ought to be a way to combine those denominators, right? So if I write this as t minus 2 to the 8th over 2t plus 1 to the 8th, then I could do that. So if I have 2t plus 1 to the 8th times 2t plus 1 to the 2nd, what's that going to give me? Yes, 2t plus 1 to the 10th for my denominator. All right, look at example number six. Now, I went ahead and filled this one in in your notes. You can see why, because otherwise it's just craziness to try and write all down. And I thought it'd be easier for you to follow along if it was filled in for you, okay? So for example number six, we have a product. So we're going to have to use product rule, right? So we're going to do first times derivative of second. And when I go to do the derivative of the second, I'm going to have to use chain rule, right? Because it's a quantity to the fourth. So if you had any quantity, no matter what it was, if you had any quantity to the fourth, what would the derivative of that be? Yes, four times that to the third. So whatever that is, I'm just going to bring it along. So four times that to the third. That's the derivative of the outside function. 
Now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So what's the derivative of that cubic? 3x squared minus 1. Perfect. So first, and this whole thing is derivative of the second. All right. Then plus second times derivative of the first. So let's go back and think about the derivative of the first. I have a quantity to the fifth power. So if I do that derivative, what would it be? 5, that quantity to the fourth, right. So the derivative of anything to the fifth would be 5, that thing to the fourth. So 5, that quantity to the fourth. Now I need the derivative of the inside, and that would be 2. Mm -hmm. Now please remember that when it comes to a test, if this is an 8-point problem on the test, there's 6 of your 8 points right there. Okay. So the simplification gets you an extra point or two. Go through and do every one of your derivatives first, and then go back and simplify as you have time. Okay? So to simplify this, I have two terms. Here's the first term. This whole thing right here is one term. This whole thing right here is a second term, right? I know that because terms are divided by plus and minus signs, right? So if typically if I have two terms and I'm simplifying, I would look to see if they have any common factors, right? I'm going to take out the greatest common factor. Here's where I got that. If you look at this first term, I have a constant of 4. And over here, I have a constant of 5 times 2 or 10. So if I take the greatest common factor out of 4 and 10, I would get 2, right? Does everybody see where I got that? Okay. Then I have 2x plus 1 to the fifth in my first term. I have 2x plus 1 to the four to the first. <laughs> 2x plus 1 to the 4th in my second term. So what do they have in common? I have 5 of them in my first term and 4 of them in my second term. What can I take out? If you have x to the 5th in a first term and x to the 4th in a second term, what could you take out? x to the 4th, right? So it's the same thing here. If I have 2x plus 1 to the 5th and 2x plus 1 to the 4th, I can take out 4 of them because they have 4 in common. Do you see where I got that? All right. Then I have um, x to the 3rd minus x plus 1 to the 3rd and that same thing to the 4th. So if I have 3 of them here and I have 4 of them <coughs> here, they have 3 in common that I could take out, right? All right, so now let's see what we have left once we take out that greatest common factor, all right? If I look at my first term right here, I took out a 2 out of that 4. So 4 divided by 2 would leave me with 2. I took out 2x plus 1 to the 4th. I had 5 of them. I took out 4 of them, so there's one of those left. I had three of these cubics. I took out all three of them, so there are none of them left over here. And I had 3x squared plus uh, minus 1. I didn't take any of those out, so I still have that one left. All right, look at your second term. For my second term down here, I had 5 times 2, and I took the 2 out, so I'm still left with the 5. I had... 2x plus 1 to the 4th, I had 4 of those, and I took all 4 out, so there are none of those left over here. I had 4 of these cubics, and I took 3 of them out, so there's 1 of them left over here. Alright, so there's what we have left over after we take out the greatest common factor. Alright, so now let's do some simplifying. I'm not obviously going to expand this to the 4th or expand this to the 3rd, I'm done with that but I can simplify in my parentheses here. So we could go through and we could say, okay, 2 times 2x is 4x and 2 times 1 is 2. And over here, distribute the 5 to that cubic is all that we've done right here. Now I want to FOIL these first two terms. So I could say 4x times 3x squared is 12x cubed. 4x times negative 1 is negative 4x. 2 times 3x squared is 6x squared. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And now I'm going to combine like terms. So I had 12x cubed and 5x cubed to give me the 17x cubed. 
no other x squared, so just the 6x squared. Negative 4x and negative 5x is negative 9x, and negative 2 and positive 5 is positive 3. So again, remember, 6 of the 8 points right here, the other 2 points down here, that's what's so time consuming. Do it on my test and on the AP exam as you have time. Um, in the matching section, of course, it's an issue of matching what they've got. On the free response, they don't require simplification, so I don't want to waste my time on that. All right, look at example seven. For example seven, I have the sine of the cosine. That's not sine times cosine. It would be sine x cosine x if they were being multiplied. This is my x. It's the sine of this quantity. So cosine tangent x is my quantity. It's my inside function. I threw brackets around it to help us see that, all right? So if you take the derivative of the sine of anything, what do you get? Cosine, right. So the derivative of sine anything would be cosine of that same thing. So I'm just going to bring that thing along for the ride. That's my inside function. Now I need to take the derivative of that inside function. And once again, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to work that as an entirely separate problem, all right? So if they had given me cosine of the tangent of x as my problem and asked me to take the derivative of that, I got to do chain rule for that too, right? This is literally like chain rule inside of chain rule. I definitely want to work this out to the side, okay? So if I were taking the derivative of the cosine of anything, what would that be? Negative, negative sine of that thing, right? So we'll have negative sine of that quantity. Now I need the derivative of the inside function. What's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared. Secant squared, right. So there's the derivative of my inside function. So let's bring it over here. Derivative of outside times derivative of inside. Now, we mentioned already that this is not cosine x times cosine x. I can't say then that's like cosine squared. That's literally the cosine of the cosine. Same idea, this isn't cosine times tangent. So it's not that I could write tangent as sine over cosine and get the cosines to cancel. I can't do any of that. Literally, the only thing I could do is maybe pull that negative out in front of the whole thing. There's nothing else there that can combine. That is my answer. Let's look at example 8. For example 8, we have secant x cubed, <coughs> the square root of that. So again, that's a quantity under a radical. I can't take the derivative of that, so I'm going to rewrite it first off by using an exponent. So instead of leaving it under the radical, I'm going to write it to the 1 half. So I have a quantity to the 1 half. So if you take the derivative of anything to the one half, what are you going to get? Perfect. One half that to the negative one half. So if I have a quantity to the one half, it's going to be one half that quantity to the negative one half. So that's the derivative of my outside function. Now I need the derivative of my inside function. So I'm going to bring secant x cubed over here and think about the derivative. Now. This, notice that secant x is not in parentheses. This is not secant x times secant x times secant x. Typically, they would put the 3 here if they meant that, right, to avoid ambiguity. When we see secant x cubed, that literally means the secant of x times x times x. So this is a quantity. This is the secant of the quantity x cubed, okay? So if you take the derivative of the secant of anything, what do you get? Secant tangent, right. So the derivative of secant anything is secant that thing, tangent that thing. So we're going to get secant x cubed, tangent x cubed. So the derivative of a secant of a quantity would be the secant of that quantity, tangent of that quantity. 
then I still need to multiply by the derivative of the quantity, right? So what's the derivative of the quantity? 3x squared, right. That's supposed to be a multiplication sign. Looks more like a subtraction sign. Yeah, it's supposed to be a multiplication sign. All right, so now we've got the derivative of our outside, derivative of our inside. Notice the difference between this problem and the last problem. This is not the, tan the secant of the tangent, right? It's literally secant x cubed times tangent x cubed. So I might be able to combine some of these. First off, I could go through and say 1 half times 3x squared. So that would give me 3 halves x squared, right? And then if you'll notice, I have secant x cubed to the negative 1 half, and I have secant x cubed, which of course would be to the 1, right? When your bases are the same and you're multiplying, you can add your exponents. My bases are the same here, secant x cubed, secant x cubed. So I can just add those exponents. So negative 1 half and 1 would give me 1 half. So one more time, this was secant x cubed to the negative 1 half and secant x cubed to the 1. When your bases are the same and you're multiplying, you can add your exponents. So negative 1 half and 1 is where I'm getting that positive 1 half right there. And that's our answer. All right. We are not doing 20 of these tonight, right? Five will more than cover it. And if you did number 17 is your challenge from last night, then you don't need to redo that one because you'll already have it unless you didn't get it right and you want to try it now that you've got a little more insight on this. So just a couple of these to make sure that we've got this down, okay? These are challenging. You might need to work them more than once. Be persistent. Be diligent. Fight through it because I know these are tough, okay? Okay.